The preprocessor is a program invoked by the compiler, which modifies the source code before the actual compilation takes place. This modification is done according to the preprocessor directives that are included in the source files. The directives are easily distinguished from normal programming code, in that they all start with the hash sign. They must always appear as the first non-white space character on a line. The include directive inserts the contents of a file into the current source file. If the file name is enclosed between angle brackets, the compiler will search for the file in the default directory, where it is configured to look for the standard header files. If instead the file name is specified between double quotes, the compiler will first search for the file in the same directory as the source file, and in case it is not there it will then search among the standard header files. Double quotes can also be used to specify an absolute or relative path to the file. The quoted form of include is normally used for programmer-defined headers, while the angle bracket form is used for standard library headers. Another important directive is define, which is used to create macros. After the directive, the name of the macro is specified, followed by what it will be replaced by. The preprocessor will go through and change any occurrences of the macro, with whatever comes after it in its definition, until the end of the line. By convention, macros should be named in uppercase letters, with each word separated by an underscore. That way they are easy to spot when reading the source code. A defined directive should not be used to directly override a previously defined macro. Doing so will give a compiler warning. In order to change a macro it first needs to be undefined, using the undefined directive before it is redefined. Note that attempting to undefine a macro that is not currently defined will not generate a warning. A macro can be made to take arguments. This allows them to define compile time functions. For example, the macro function here evaluates to the largest of its two arguments. The macro function is called just as if it was a regular C++ function. Keep in mind that for this kind of function to work, the arguments must be known at compile time. To break a macro function across several lines, the backslash character can be used. This will escape the new line character that marks the end of a preprocessor directive. Note that there mustn't be any white space after the backslash. Although defined directives can be powerful, they tend to make the code more difficult to read and debug. Macros should therefore only be used when they are absolutely necessary. C++ code, such as constant variables, enums, and inline functions can often accomplish the same goal more efficiently and safely than defined directives can. The directives used for conditional compilation can include or exclude part of the source code if a certain condition is met. First, there is the if and end if directives, which specifies a section of code that will only be included if the condition after the if directive is true. Note that this condition must evaluate to a constant expression. Just as with the C++ if statement, any number of else if directives, and one final else directive, can be included. Sometimes, a section of code should only be compiled if a certain macro has been defined, irrespective of its value. For this purpose two special operators can be used, defined and not defined. The same effect can also be achieved using the directives, if defined and if not defined, respectively. For instance, the if defined section is only compiled if the specified macro has been previously defined. Note that a macro is considered defined even if it has not been given a value. When the error directive is encountered, the compilation is aborted. This directive can be useful for example to determine whether or not a certain line of code is being compiled. It can optionally take a parameter that specifies the description of the generated error. Another standard directive is line, which can be used to change the line number that is displayed when an error occurs during compilation. Following this directive, the line number will as normal be increased by one for each successive line. The directive can take an optional string parameter, 
which sets the file name that will be shown when an error occurs. The last standard directive is Pragma, or Pragmatic Information. This directive is used to specify options to the compiler. For example, Pragma message can be used to have the compiler output a string to the build window. Another argument for this directive is warning, which changes how the compiler handles warnings.